All right, folks, we continue our coverage of the election uh, last night in Alabama. Uh, when you look at the turnout, uh, that's what it boiled down to in terms of who came out, in terms of who was able to uh, power Doug Jones to victory. Well, uh, early on, we talked about on this show that you did not have a level of energy. You did not have folks on the ground. Well, uh, Rose, of course, you hear, keep hearing her name. She's the co-founder of the Selma Bridge Crossing Jubilee, coordinator of Vote or Die campaign. She joins us right now. Rose, uh, first of all, congratulations to you and all of the black folks there in Alabama. And to you, my brother. We share this victory. Um, we, we kept talking about why you must engage us earlier, why you must hit the ground and not just go city city, but neighborhood by neighborhood, block by block, street by street, using all of the infrastructure in our community to get folks out to vote. Describe for the folks nationally how you and others were able to do it in Alabama. It's amazing, um, but we started like, still late, but two months ago with this Vote or Die campaign. And we knew we had to energize our people in churches and nightclubs and festivals and football games, the voter die team was everywhere early. And I want to thank those boots on the ground. It was mainly unemployed people because we had no money at the beginning of this campaign. Mm -hmm. It was unemployed people that followed me from city to city, primarily the Black Belt, Montgomery, and Birmingham, as we joined forces with people on the ground in those places. And we energized the base. We energized our people, young people using social media. And I I'm just delighted that it came together. We cannot stop here. We have critical elections next year. I cannot afford to rejoice long. Uh, someone said, I know you're happy, yes, but my happiness must be channeled into more activity. And I see my brother, Dr. Kahn's there. Dr. Kahn, I expect to see you in Selma at the Jubilee. <laughs> uh, Roland, let me tell you what happened. Uh, listen, <laughs> incredible work, really, though. Seriously, Fire. I, I, yeah, don't worry. Not only am I going to be there, I'm right with you. My cousins and them voted because of what you did yesterday. My cousins and them. And them, brother. And them. And them. Uh, uh, I want to go to, uh, I want to go to Dewana. Rolling, yeah, yeah, yeah Rose, go ahead. Go, go ahead, Rose. I want to tell you what happened about intimidation. Tasha talked about mm -hmm. suppression. We had what we call our voted parties throughout uh, Dallas County. I was in Orville. And this is the truth. I had my, I was in my husband's car and I had my dot, my vote and die uh, magnets on. And this white man came and snatched it on. And when I confronted him, told him this was not Old South, I would not be intimidated. He actually threatened to kill me. And I want to give, and this happened just yesterday in a little place in Dallas County called Orville. He said, someone will die today. And I want to give thanks to that young black mayor of that city, <laughs> that young woman was not so young. Not only did she come to the polling place, they called the sheriffs on me. These black deputies showed up and did not for once try to intimidate me, but said, Miss Sanders, we are here to protect you. That's why wow. the election of black elected officials is important. I could have been killed 20 years ago, certainly 50 years ago. DeWanna Thompson, uh, this goes beyond what took place yesterday. Uh, with what you and what VoteVote.us are doing, you want to take this thing uh, national. Absolutely. We believe that this is a bottle that can now be used in cities across the country and states across the country to activate and mobilize African-American millennials, but also the black church. I think it's also critical to note that we have to spot these opportunities early, Roland. I remember in July and in June, I was telling people we need to look at this race. This is an opportunity for us to take back a seat that we have not been able to take back in 20 years. And people were not necessarily listening. And so it was until uh, Doug Jones uh, won the primary that people started to think about it. But I started to think about it the moment that Jeffrey Board Guide Sessions became uh, the U.S. attorney. And I said, no, we need to, I'm not worried about that seat. I'm worried about this seat that's going to be vacated in Birmingham and in Alabama. And that was the time that we started organizing resources. We knew we could not wait on the Democratic Party. We knew we could not wait on the campaign itself. And so we started talking to donors about putting money into an independent black political structure that could move bodies. And Woke Vote is just a premier program within that. But the strategy to put that together was a statewide strategy with so many of the people that you had uh, on the show earlier today. Rose, 
what's next? Yes, you have primaries coming up uh, in, uh, of course, uh, in a couple of months. You have local elections. You have state elections. Uh, I keep making the point that you're not going to see a change uh, in Congress if you don't see a change, how we make changes on the state level where voter suppression is really uh, taking place and taking root. Ron, we met with our team. We rejoiced for a few minutes, and then we began to strategize. We intend to have our chat and chew meetings every Thursday. We started these chat and chew meetings to organize so that people can sit at the table together. We will continue to them. We have a very important probate judge race, sheriff race. We've never had a black probate judge or sheriff in this county. Yes, we know that we have to stay organized, and what we need are those resources, mm. uh, because we've got very few of them. At the last minute, we got a few little grants, very few. We need those resources year round. We need on the ground organizers every every yep. day in our state. Just like yes. SNCC organized and, and paid people 10 and $15 a week, certainly that is not enough. We think there's enough resources in the black community to come up with a fund of money to put these young people on the ground, organizing in their communities every week. And that's what I intend to do with the energy and the resources like Tosh and other people that I know, because they're anxious and ready to do this. And I think we must give them the platform and also the motivation. I'm excited about it. I did not want to do the voter die campaign, honestly. I'm seven, almost 73. I said, look, let me focus on my writing and my music. I would like to do this along with John Zip. Yeah. I'm glad I did it now, but I cannot be satisfied unless this group retains its integrity mission because we are living a vote a die illustration. Hey, Ro hey Rose, blessing. Rose, you're breaking up real quick. Yeah. I need, what's your website if folks want to give? Um, people can get bridgecrossingjubilee.com, bridgecrossingjubilee, and bridge crossing this year is March 4th. And our theme is many more bridges to cross. We look forward to you also being here and Tasha's also. So, All right. So they can call us bridgecrossingjubilee.com. Bridgecrossingjubilee.com. Dewana, your website as well for folks who want to give. Wokevote.us. All right, then, Rose and Dewana, we appreciate it. Black women made it happen uh, as usual. We, pre we appreciate it. Thanks a bunch. Thank you so Thank much. You. All right, Thank real quick, real quick before I uh, go to break here, uh, uh, Spencer, when I had a meeting uh, with, at the RNC with Rice Priebus and several others, there was a sister who was there as well. She said point blank, she said, black, she said, no other group hates us more than black women. <laughs> she said, no other group. She said, black women hate the Republican Party. Right. And unfortunately, they haven't been reaching out to black women the way that they should, right? But this isn't just a Democrat versus Republican thing. This is in progressive circles. Right. Are we going to invest in institutions that turn out black folks? And that's what happened in terms of Alabama. And they've got a case that they can take to well, foundations and others right. saying, hey, this worked here invest now in terms of black turn and this is the point that i have been making on this show for the four years uh challenging democrats challenging progressives uh challenging folks like emily's list challenging the environmentalists uh don't treat black folks like political sharecroppers right uh where you want us to turn out the vote but then you want us to till the soil uh and then uh, not actually get paid for it. Don't, be a, don't have a situation where you want black folks to volunteer, but you want to pay other people. If you think you're going to win, you better put the resources there. Uh, and so I, th we might only have a few more days of this show, but I'm telling you right now, uh, Democratic a national Committee, Democratic Senator Committee, the Democratic Congressional Campaign Committee, the Democratic Governors Association, and all these progressive groups out there as well, all of these PACs, y'all better hire black political consultants, y'all better hire black pollsters, y'all better hire black media companies to do your ads, you better hire the folks who out there who understand African Americans, and don't just hire them to talk to black people, we can talk to anybody, but the reality is you do not win unless you go through black people. Let's be clear. Weekdays on TV One. I will never lie to you. Oh my God. Roland Martin. He doesn't want to talk to us. He wants to ignore us. Uncensored. Hell no. no. That ain't no cut it, boo. Unapologetic. No, no, that, that is fundamentally false. You are wrong. Unfiltered. He wants an America where we all look alike. He ain't talking about black people. Unrelenting. You better go work out because you got to fight on your hands. News One Now with Roland Martin, weekdays at 7 a.m.
on TV One.